We have seen ray traces that run in Excel or on a calculator. And I have also done similar projects on my channel. Now a very interesting challenge would be to create such a ray trace in Minecraft with redstone. Redstone is super basic, it can be on or off, one or zero, which means we have to do everything from scratch. So this is the final image that I rendered. It doesn't look like much, but these points that you see here are actually 8 spheres that are being rendered with a ray traced camera system. So this is a fully functioning 3D environment. And here is a blender simulation of what it would look like. We can move around by changing the coordinates of the camera, we can move forward, up and down, and left and right. And we can do the same in Minecraft, we just have to enter different coordinates here, in the back. So let's enter these three coordinates here, but we have to use binary. And let's start the rendering. And as you can see the pixels here at the top are being rendered. And this is very slow. Every single pixel takes like 5 minutes to calculate, even with mods that speed up my game. And to render this first whole image, I had Minecraft open in the background for more than a week or so. People have built other 3D renders in Minecraft in the past, like this one. And they used a technique called rasterization. So what is the difference between this and a ray tracer? In the first case we start with the 3D points of our object and we first project them onto a flat plane, our screen. And now we basically have 2D coordinates, so now we can draw the image in 2D. For example by connecting the points with lines. And this is very fast and that's why we use it in real-time applications, like video games. The ray tracer on the other hand kind of works in the opposite way. We start at the screen and for every pixel, we shoot a so-called camera ray, which we then intersect with the objects in our scene. And this ray then returns data that we can use to color this pixel. And this is extremely slow, because we have to do this for every single pixel. And that's why in the past we could only use this for offline rendering, like Blender Cycles. Of course we could make this ray tracer more complex. We could add lighting, ray trace shadows and reflections, just as we did in my tutorial series. We could basically create a full pass tracer, even with redstone. But this would be insanely slow, and nobody wants to do that. Just to give you an idea, to render this simple scene as a 64x64 64 64 image, we would need to calculate many thousands of square roots, divisions and multiplications. With redstone even a single division can take many seconds to calculate. So I really needed to do some optimization. I simulated this whole thing in Blender. It looks very complex, but mathematically it is very simple. For example, I got rid of all the square roots and now we are left with only the most basic operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. And some other operations like bit shifting, which are extremely fast and simple. I used 20-bit integers, which means every number is represented as 20 zeros or ones. 20-bit integers give us enough precision to render the scene at a resolution of 256. Only after that we start to see artifacts. Next I had to build this in Minecraft. I highly recommend the tutorial series from Matt Wings, which gave me a good introduction to redstone and many parts of this build are based on these tutorials. I started with the carry cancel adder and expanded it to 20 bits. And if we look from the top, this basically looks like an addition node in Blender. Here we have the two inputs and here is the output which gives us the result of the addition. And every number is represented with 20 bits stacked vertically. And you could actually take the output signals and connect them to the input socket of another node. Now from this adder I made a subtractor, multiplier and divider. I also built some other components for bit shifting, memory and so on. Now if we want to calculate something like our ray tracer, we could chain all these components together just like the blender nodes and we would get the correct output. But that's not a good approach for many reasons. Instead, what if we could build some sort of Redson computer, which we can give a set of instructions, a program, and it then executes this program automatically. The most simple way to do this is to just connect all the inputs and outputs with one single wire. Now let's say we want to multiply two numbers, and so let's say they are stored in these memory cells, which are also connected to this main data wire. To multiply A and B, we first open A, and let this data flow out, and now the number A is in this redstone wire. 
Now we want to input A into the multiplier, so we accept the data here in the first input slot. And now A is stored in here. Then we open the memory cell that holds B and we accept B in the second input slot. And now the multiplier does the calculation and then it outputs the result also into this main wire. And now we can do whatever we want with this result. For example, we could store it in another memory cell or we could input it into another function like the addition component, for example. So this thing can execute any series of additions or multiplications you want. Now all these instructions, for example the instruction open A, could be triggered by its own redstone signal. And we could put all these wires on one side. And depending on which wire we power, a specific instruction is executed. For example if we power this wire, A opens. Now we can program this whole thing by defining a pattern of instructions that will power one of these wires after another. And this is very similar to how this ray tracer works. We have different functions that are all connected to this main redstone wire here. And there are 35 different instructions that control this whole thing. Now this module here stores the whole program. It contains around 280 lines of code, so 280 instructions. And when I start the whole calculation process, I send a redstone pulse into this module and it will return this pulse in the lane that I specified in the code. And this pulse will then execute this specific instruction inside the machine. After that, the pulse will then return back here to execute the next instruction. So a single pulse is constantly cycling through this whole system and executes one line of code after another. And to complete a single image, over a million cycles have to be completed. In conclusion, this was a very interesting project. It has all kinds of problems and you could spend a lot of time optimizing it. But the main goal for me was to learn how basic binary operations work and how to turn them into something that can be programmed to calculate basically anything you want.